If you're a fan of old school bodybuilding, then make sure to check out Subs the Movie. Filmmaker Alex Ardenti explores the $40 billion sports supplement industry, delving into the origins, evolution, and current state of supplements used by millions of fitness enthusiasts worldwide, available at Amazon and Vimeo. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookham here, and today I am very saddened to report that my good friend and Silver Era legend Marvin Eder has passed away on the 1st of February this year of 2022. After turning 90 years old last October the 22nd. I did begin a series of videos on Marvin Eder last year and discontinued it as I was hoping to get more interviews with Marvin, but he had been suffering from arthritis and severe pain for a while. I was in touch with his son this week after Marvin's health had declined and he passed away in hospital surrounded by his family. Although we have truly lost the last of the Mohicans, so to speak, as Marvin was the last of the Silver Era legends to still be alive, I would like to dedicate this tribute to his amazing life. A tribute full of accomplishment, a true reflection of what can be achieved naturally, and in a way, a reflection for all of us to consider regarding the great and latent power that lies within us. That is, the incredible human potential that we all have. Marvin Eder was truly an example of this. Known as the Biceps from the Bronx, Marvin Eder was born in Brooklyn, New York on October the 22nd, 1931, and grew up in a poor family on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Throughout his youth, he would help his father in the baking business, but as an infant, he suffered many illnesses, including whooping cough, polio, and rheumatic fever, and by the age of 15, Marvin was a weak and scrawny teenager, weighing only 54 kilos or about 120 pounds, standing at 5 foot 2 inches or about 157 centimeters in height. Marvin recalled to me that when he expressed his desire to train with weights to his parents and friends, they told him that they had heard that heavy training would stunt a person's growth and suggested that he forget the whole thing. But Marvin countered with the fact that he had not grown in height for two years, and he seemed to be stuck at that height anyway, and that he thought they were wrong in their contention that weight training would restrict a person's height increase, and because he couldn't afford a barbell or weights, or even go to a gym, Marvin told me that he spent several months performing chinning and dipping exercises at a local park. Before long, Marvin could perform hundreds of dips and chins, and later had kids hang off him to build up his strength in the chin and the dip. He would later train at the Eastside Barbell Club, and then at Abe Goldberg's gym alongside legendary names such as Abe Goldberg and Leroy Colbert, and even shared training tips and sessions with the great Reg Park. Marvin Eder stormed onto the bodybuilding scene in the late 1940s, winning the IFBB 1947 Junior North America title, the IFBB Junior Mr. New York City overall title in 1949 at the age of 17, and later the 1950 IFBB Mr. Eastern America beating legendary Leo Robert. After not faring well in the AAU Mr. America due to the feud between Hoffman and Weider, he gave up bodybuilding. Marvin also shared with me his dream of competing for the Olympic Games, as he was extremely powerful in the Olympic lifts. He was a true prodigy in fact, being compact in size and built like a tank. But again, Hoffman prevented this from happening, which completely left Marvin disillusioned with the Iron Game. Unfortunately, Marvin left the Iron Game at the age of 21 before his potential was truly recognized, and then pursued a career as a plumber, and was rather successful in his plumbing business. Like many of the Silver Era, Marvin Eder combined bodybuilding and Olympic lifting to great effect. He not only looked immensely strong, but he was. He credits the all-out heavy lifting he did, to the thickly developed physique he possessed at his peak, where at 5 foot 8 inches he weighed 200 pounds with arms over 19 inches, a 50 inch chest, 26 and a half inch thighs and a 17 and a half inch calf. Marvin's incredible strength feats are still spoken of and revered in, even today. Such was the impact he had on the lifting world. 
For those of you that might be asking, why is Marvin Eater considered pound for pound one of the strongest lifters of all time? Just have a look at these statistics. At a body weight of 190 to 200 pounds and at his peak, Marvin Eater performed the following strength feats. An Olympic press of 330 pounds, deep squats 50 repetitions with 300 pounds, side laterals repetitions that is with 120 pound dumbbells. Actually, he recounts being able to perform a complete upper body workout with 120 pound dumbbells performing uh, curls, laterals and triceps extensions with 120 pound dumbbells with Reg Park. He could perform one arm chins that is 8 to 10 even consecutively with each arm, presses behind the neck with 305 pounds, a side press with a left uh, hand with 220 pounds actually being a man who was sitting on his hand and he pressed him um, over over the, overhead of course. Parallel bar dips with 434 pounds, that is two men hanging from his feet and performing repetitions with 435 pounds hanging off him. A bench press of 515 pounds, and here's another story. In fact, Marvin Eder was the first man under 200 pounds in history to bench press over 500 pounds. He could also do stiff arm pullovers with over 250 pounds, wide grip chins, 80 with his body weight and 8 reps with 200 pounds attached and I already mentioned that he could perform 8 to 10 one arm chins as well with each arm. And finally consecutive handstand push ups on a horizontal ladder 25 in total 25 repetitions it's just incredible. Further understand that Marvin Eder was completely natural. For this reason the biceps from the Bronx stands as one of the true silver era greats and pound for pound one of the strongest men of all time. So it is with this loving tribute that I say farewell to my dear friend and rest in peace Marvin Eder, my mentor. You were a great friend to me. I really enjoyed our many conversations and I will miss you. You were a true beacon of natural strength and will serve as an example to all of us of what can be achieved through hard work. My deepest condolences again to your family and friends. Again, we can at least rejoice in the fact that Marvin did live a fulfilling life and will stand forever as pound for pound, one of the strongest natural bodybuilders in history. Rest in peace, my friend. That's it from me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now.
Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has, I mean, there's so much stuff that probably hasn't been proven by science, and it will take science to prove or disprove uh, Vince. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the classic physique bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Deronda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And believe me, it's a brilliant, brilliant program. Many people have used it. I know I know personally a lot of uh, bodybuilders that have actually used it and uh, f made fantastic results with it. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just these, these three books, as I call it, the Classic Physique Bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.coldenerabookum.com. Now, the Pro Series of Bodybuilding, which was targeted for professional bodybuilders, is a contains six programs, each of which go for two months each, so it's a whole year, uh, again, in preparation for competition. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooking.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platz, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. Your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. To take full advantage of my collaborations, use code GEB20 with nspnutrition.com and vincegeronda.com as well as code bookworm12 at osl.com for a discount at checkout. I don't think that Bill Phillips looked at it as I want to compete against them. I want to destroy them. If they pass legislation basically making any type of food supplement a prescription item, that would be the end, the death of the entire food supplement industry. Take your vitamin pill now. In the 1960s, the sports supplement industry was barely emerging. I think the reason why Joe Weider was so successful was he had Arnold on his side. He wasn't selling supplements. He was in the dream business. Joe Weider was a marketing genius. People would say the promotions or the endorsements back then were cheesy. To me, it wasn't. I loved it. Fitness was taking off. You know, fitness became cool. You had a lot of readers that wanted to be like the stars that they idolized. Bill's strength is his marketing savvy. He's a marketing genius. Got it, got it. It's only by the right of American citizens to have free access to dietary supplements of their choice. Consult your physician, you might as well consult the next guy you meet on the street. They don't know a damn thing about vitamins and nutrition. The dietary supplement industry became the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary supplements, pharmaceutical. We are more regulated than drugs. They come in and you uh, need to allow the FDA. They have jurisdiction. The enforcement is kind of the questionable side of it and how do they really get a handle on this monster? A lot of people tell me that the dietary supplement industry is completely unregulated. It's the wild, wild west out there. It's a free for all. That could not be further from the truth. A dietary supplement is not allowed to have a side effect. I always say the pharmaceutical has to have a minimum of 100 side effects in order for it to be a drug. And now, it's a $40 billion industry and growing. That's the really interesting thing, is the cast of characters from the 80s, when it was kind of iffy, to now, when it's a lot more legitimate. They made it sound cutting edge, revolutionary, 
and different, and I want that. That's cool. We are in this industry to improve our health. It's not just a vanity project here. We're working on our lifeline. We eat a certain way to improve our health. We train a certain way to improve our health. Supplements are just that. They supplement your work, your graft, your nutrition. Uh, they demonize dietary supplements, but they say all you need is real food. Well, what's a real food? They pump you up and get you hard, stronger, faster, bigger. Doc, I want to take this weight gain. I want to take this pre-workout. That this no! No way! I, that stuff, we don't know what's in that. It could be, no way! I'm not gonna give you, it's gonna kill the industry, bottom line. So I must have drank so much protein powder from age 15 to 18 that my head was gonna explode. <laughs> I believed in metrics so much that I would probably punch somebody in the face if they tried to take it away from me.